Hello students and welcome to the second part of strength 2.2. So in this particular session, we are going to be looking at and learning some calculations relating to gas laws. So let's try to see how we are going to tackle all the calculation problems related to the gas laws. Gas laws can be explained using ideal gas. Ideal is something that is perfect in nature. So when we're talking about an ideal gas, we are talking about a particular gas which obeys all the gas laws perfectly. However, this gas doesn't exist in reality. Okay? In reality, we have real gases like carbon dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen, etc. Ideal gas is something that is theoretical in nature and that is used to do certain calculations. So let's look at some of the properties of an ideal gas. Gas molecules are composed of large number of particles, which are always in constant random motion. Okay, so when the gas particles are colliding with each other, they are moving around each uh, everywhere randomly. They are exerting a pressure on each other as well as to the walls of the container. Now, since the distance between the gas molecules are far greater than the size of the molecules, we say that the volume occupied by an ideal gas is negligible. When we are looking at a real life situation, if we blow up a balloon, can we say that the gas particles are not occupying any space? Well, we don't say that, isn't it? Because when we blow up a balloon, the gas particles are taking up the space inside the balloon. That is why we see the balloon expanding. However, for an ideal gas, that is not the case. For an ideal gas, we say that the particles of these ideal gases are very far away from each other. So far away that we, we assume that they are not even there. Hence, we say that they are having a negligible volume. Okay, They are always moving around. So the intermolecular attraction between these ideal gas particles are negligible as well. Okay. In order for, to, for the molecules to have intermolecular attraction with each other, they must, they must be close enough to each other. Real gases, they are a little bit closer to each other, which is why they have intermolecular attractions. But for an ideal gas, they are very far away from each other. Therefore, there is no chance of them having an intermolecular attraction. The third property of an ideal gases are that the ideal gases are said to have elastic collisions. Now, what we mean by elastic collision is that when these gas particles collide with each other, there is no net loss of energy. Okay. So usually when they are colliding with each other, they collide and they bounce away from each other, resulting is in zero loss in the kinetic energy. And that is what we mean by having an elastic collisions. So ideal gases have elastic collisions. The average kinetic energy of the particles will depend on the temperature only. So that basically means that if we increase the temperature of a particular system, there will be an increase in the kinetic energy of the molecules. In comparison to an ideal gas, a real gases will have opposite properties to that of the ideal gas. Okay, so when we said ideal gases uh, have uh, zero intermolecular attractions, real gases, on the other hand, will have intermolecular attractions between each other. When we say that ideal gases have negligible volume, real gases occupy certain volume. The other thing that we have to keep in mind is about the conditions at which a real gas can become an ideal gas. When the temperature is higher and the pressure is lower, any particular gas is going to behave like an ideal gas. So the reason why that happens is this. At a high temperature, the gas particles are very far away from each other. So when they are very far away from each other, they do not have time to interact with each other. Okay? That is why we say they are going to be far away and behave like an ideal gas. When the pressure is low, they will not be able to collide with each other effectively. So, if they do not collide with each other effectively, they do not end up having a loss of kinetic energy. 
that is why we say that there will be an elastic collision between the ideal gas particles okay so once again when the temperature is high and the pressure is low then the gas particles will start behaving like an ideal gas but when the temperature is lower and the pressure is higher then we will expect the gas particles to behave like a real gas in chemistry certain standard units are used to calculate certain variables in calculations and here when we are calculating any variable using temperature we will always measure temperature in kelvin so you can see the conversion here 1 kelvin or kelvin is equal to the degree celsius temperature plus 273 so whenever you have to convert a degree celsius to kelvin you just have to add 273 to it okay there will be a condition known as an stp condition stp simply means standard temperature and pressure where the temperature is 273 kelvin and the pressure is one atmosphere or 101.3 kilopascal so when these two conditions are present we say the condition is known as an stp condition at stp condition one mole of a particular gas will always have 22.4 liters so how much is one mole let's see when we're talking about one mole we are talking about let's say one mole of hydrogen gas okay one mole of hydrogen gas would simply be two grams of hydrogen okay two grams of hydrogen gas is one mole so mole is equal to mass divided by mr isn't it so the mr of h2 is two so two grams divided by two which is the mr will give you one mole so two grams of hydrogen gas will occupy 22.4 liters which is same as decimeter cube at stp and then when we're talking about oxygen 32 grams of oxygen at stp will take up 22.4 liters of space when we talk about nitrogen 28 grams of nitrogen will take up 22.4 liters of space at stp so this volume will be applicable only at an stp at a stp condition not at any other condition okay there are different laws that we are going to be studying in this session so the first law is called Boyle's law Boyle's law basically gives a relationship between a pressure and a volume of a gas when the temperature is constant okay so you can see here what is happening here when the volume is higher the particles are okay there is a low chance of these particles colliding with each other so the pressure is going to be low however if the plunger is moved down the volume is uh, decreasing when the volume is decreasing the particles are constantly colliding with each other resulting in a greater pressure and this is how we represent the relationship between our pressure and the volume so when we're looking at this graph let's see how we interpret the graph so if i'm talking about a variable here a measurement here okay so if the pressure is low let's take the reading of the volume so low pressure is going to result in a higher volume but when the pressure is increasing to a greater value you can see what is happening to the volume the volume is decreasing okay so at a low pressure which is this part here okay make a mark and see you can see the volume is more but when we are talking about a higher pressure which is this part here you can see that the volume is lower now so that is the inverse relationship this particular graph is also showing the same relationship it is 1 over p okay that's an inverse of pressure so an inverse of pressure against the volume will always have a linear relationship let's look at some calculations involving Boyle's law a certain mass of a gas occupies 2.5 liters at 90 kilopascal pressure Calculate the pressure it would exert if the gas is placed in a 10 liter container at the same temperature. So whenever you have a calculation question relating to gas laws, it is very important to pick up your variables. So let's see what variables we have. We have a certain gas which is taking up 2.5 liters. So we know that the volume of the gas is 2.5 liters. Okay, so you can see I have written V1 there. 
because in the question there are two volumes that are mentioned when you have two volumes mentioned then one will become v1 the other will become v2 if you have two pressure mentioned then one will be p1 the other will be p2 okay so we put the variables as it is so v1 is our 2.5 liter then we have the pressure as 90.90 uh, 90 kilopascal which is your p1 we want to find out the pressure at 10 liter so the 10 liter is your v2 and we want to find the p2 so the formula that we use is this here p1 v1 is equal to p2 v2 and when we make p2 the subject of the formula let's use algebra here so this is what we have p2 is equal to p1 times v1 divided by v2 substitute your values and this is what you get so your p2 will be 22.50 kilopascal always when you are writing your final answer keep your answer to two decimal places do not uh, round off your answer early here okay when we are doing an intermediate stage so this is your intermediate stage okay so when you are multiplying 90 times 2.5 90 times 2.5 you may get an answer that answer should not be rounded off otherwise your answer at this stage is going to differ the final rounding off is only going to happen at the last stage which is your answer at two decimal places okay so i hope you have understood how to go about doing this particular calculation some of the key points to uh, to keep in mind number one when you're reading your question highlight or circle your variables and write them down if need be so you must have your formula sure you're working clearly putting the variables in the right position get your answer in two decimal places and be sure to put the correct unit so four things formula working answer unit next let's look at what charles law is charles law is a relationship showing the relationship between temperature and the volume of a gas when the pressure is constant okay so what is happening here is when the temperature increases the particles gain more kinetic energy they move around and they occupy a greater space resulting in an increased volume so we say temperature and volume are directly related to each other and that linear relationship we can show as such so when you have the temperature in degree celsius you are going to start your graph from here a negative axis okay but if your temperature is in kelvin you're going to start your graph from a zero axis let's look at a question here now a helium balloon is filled with uh, 75 liters of air at 25 degrees celsius calculate the new temperature when the volume is uh, going to increase to 100 liters so first thing we do is to change the temperature into kelvin so 25 degrees plus 273 will give you uh, temperature in kelvin so let's see what variables we have 75 liters that is your v1 25 degrees celsius change that into kelvin and we have 298 kelvin v2 this is our second volume that is 100 liters and we want to find our t2 so the formula we use is this here v1 divided by t1 equals v2 over t2 so since we want to find t2 which is this here so what we are going to be doing is to move all the denominators as numerators so do you just cross multiply when you cross multiply you multiply v1 by t2 and v2 by t1 so that you have all the variables as numerators okay so to do that this is what we have v1 times t2 equals v2 times t1 now it makes our work much easier isn't it so make t2 the subject of the formula that will be v2 times t1 divided by v1 so let's substitute our variables now so this is what we get 100 times 298 divided by 75 and we have our t2 as 397.33 kelvin check your answer and see if you are on the right track we are going to be looking at is avogadro's law okay 
So this particular law depends on the molecules of the gas present. And this is where the volume and the moles are going to be related to each other. So we can say that when the volume of a gas is at the same temperature and pressure are same, then their moles are also going to be the same. Hello learners, this is Easy Engineering. This time we're going to talk about Avogadro's Law. In a gas, its physical behavior is described by these four variables, namely pressure, volume, temperature, and amount or mole. In this video, we will have Avogadro's Law which is concerned in relationship of volume and amount of gas. This condition is true when temperature and pressure is constant. Avogadro's law was formulated by the famous scientist Amadeo Avogadro in late 1812. In Avogadro's experiment, he prepared two test tubes and fitted it with piston cylinder assembly. In the first test tube, he added about 0.10 mole of dry ice and 0.20 mole of dry ice in the second test tube. When the dry ice became gas in the room temperature, and the pressure of the dry ice became equal to atmospheric pressure, he noticed that the volume in the second test tube is twice the volume of the first tube. The relationship of volume and amount follows this graph as shown. When we write it in mathematical terms, we have volume is directly proportional to amount. This relation can also be expressed as the volume over amount is equal to some constant if we have a gas under two different conditions. We can write the formula as In the formula, we can see that under a certain condition of the gas, increasing the volume would result to increasing the amount of gas or decreasing the volume would result to decreasing the amount mo. For example, the initial amount of dry ice is 1 mo and occupies a volume of 2 liters. What is the volume if we increase the amount of dry ice to 2 mo? We first identify the given. We have, we are going to find the final volume. Hence, we substitute the known values to the formula. Solving for the final volume, we have 4 liters. So the final volume is 4 liters. Doubling the amount mole also doubles the volume. So that's it. It's very easy, right? So that is all for now. I hope you learned something today. Once again, this is Easy Engineering. Next up, we are going to see how we are going to combine Charles, Boyle's, and Avogadro's principle in one law, which is called the ideal gas law. So in an ideal gas law, this is the variables that we are going to use. PV is equal to nRT, where P is the pressure, V is the volume in liters, moles is N, R is a constant whose value is 8.314 and T is the temperature measured in kelvins. So whenever we have a question and we are confused as to what law we have to use, you pick out the variables that we are given. So in this case, let's see what we are given. A sample of air at 17 degrees Celsius. So we know the temperature, okay? And 100.1 kilopascal, so that's our pressure. Occupies 40 ml, that's our volume. Calculate the amount of the gas. So the word amount means moles. Now let's see what variables we have. We have one temperature, one pressure, and one volume. So if you have one of each variable, the formula that we use is PV is equal to nRT. That is one simple trick to remember. If you have two volumes given or two temperature given, then we will not be able to use this particular formula. Okay, so let's see. We have our P1, which is P1 pressure. We have our volume in liters. The R value will always be a constant, which is 8.314. 
and the temperature will always be measured in Kelvin. So 17 degrees is 290 Kelvin. Let's substitute our formula now. Okay, so we are supposed to be finding N. Make N the subject of the formula. So it will be PV divided by RT. Okay, so when we substitute the variables, this is what we get. Our pressure, which is 100.1, multiplied by the volume, which is 0 0.04, divided by R times temperature. So the moles that we are going to be getting is 1.66 times 10 to the power minus 3 moles. Remember the four things I have mentioned earlier on. The formula, the working, the answer and the unit. Okay, All these four things must be in your calculation. And your answer in the final stage must be in two decimal places. Next up we have combined gas law. In a combined gas law, we are going to be looking at two different situations. So at one situation, we will have a different set of variables. But when the condition changes, then the variable will also change. So here, we are going to be using the formula P1V1 over T1 is equal to P2V2 over T2. Okay, so let's look at one example now. Now here, you can see why we are going to use this particular formula. Unlike the one we learned earlier on. In our previous example, when we had ideal gas law, we were given one of each variable. But in here, we are given two of each variables. So, a sample of air at 18 degrees Celsius. Okay, so that's our first temperature. And 103 kilopascal. So that's our first pressure. Occupies 20 ml. Okay, so that's our first volume. Calculate the volume it would occupy at STP. So at STP, what are the things we know? STP simply means standard temperature pressure. So here, the temperature is 273 Kelvin and the pressure is 101.3 kilopascal. So now you can see when we put the things together. So in condition 1, we have our pressure 1 as 103. We have our volume 1. The 20 ml is to be in liters. So that's 0 0.02 liters. The temperature 1 is 291 Kelvin. 18 plus 273 will give you 291 Kelvin. Now our second condition is the STP condition. And we already know at STP the pressure will be 101.3 and the temperature will be 273 Kelvin. So now it is pretty much clear what we have. We have two pressure, two temperature and we have to find the missing V2. So whenever we have this kind of scenario, you're going to be using the combined gas law. Okay. So now let's combine these formulas together. Okay, so this is our parent formula. Like I said earlier on, when we have uh, algebras, okay, and we have fractions where we have to make subject of the formula, make the denominators into a numerator. And to do that, we just cross multiply, do the crisscross method. So here, you remove T1, move it to the right hand side. You remove T2, move it on the left hand side. So it will result in P1 V1 times T2 is equal to P2 V2 times T1. Okay, now we make V2 the subject of the formula. So when we do that, we are going to move P2 T1 on the other side. So that will be. P1 V1 T2 divided by P2 times T1. So substitute your variables. P1 is 103. Okay. V1 is 0 0.02. T2 is 273 divided by P2 which is 101.3 times T1 which is 291. So you get your volume 2 as 0 0.02 liters. I hope you have understood that part uh, students. So just to sum it up, what are some of the laws that we have learned? We learned about Boyle's law which talked about pressure and volume relationship. Can you recall what the law was? P1 V1 is equal to P2 V2 at constant temperature. Then we talked about Charles law which talked about uh, volume and temperature relationship at constant pressure. So it was V1 over T1 equals V2 over 
T2. Then we talked about Avogadro's principle, which talked about the re linear relationship between volume and the moles. So the greater the volume is, the greater the moles is. And then we talked about ideal gas law. Ideal gas where we combine Charles, Boyle's and Avogadro's law together. PV is equal to NRT. You use that particular law when you have one of each variable given. Okay. So you have the pressure, you have the temperature, you have the volume, the moles and maybe you have to find one of the four. R will always be a constant. And then finally, we looked at combined gas law when we have two different scenarios. So my advice to you here is students, whenever you have a calculation in chemistry relating to gas law, underline your variables or it is better to list them down. Okay, just like I have uh, listed uh, in this particular example, you write these variables down so that it is very clear to you. And then you can just write your parent formula and do your substitution. So students, I hope you have learned quite a deal about the gas laws and under what condition you are going to be using each of the formulas. So now, time for the quiz. Let's see how much you have understood the concept. So the question for today is, a gas has a volume of 3.86 liters at a temperature of 23 degrees Celsius. Calculate the volume of the gas if its temperature is raised to 80 degrees Celsius while its pressure is kept constant. You can pause the video and work out your solution and check out your answer with the one that is provided now. So, I hope you are on the right track. Okay, so your volume is 4.60 liters. Let's see if you have uh, been able to work this out. By the way, you can figure out whose law this one is, which has a relationship between uh, volume and temperature. Until then, students, you take care. We will meet in the next session where we will continue our discussion with more guest laws and more formulas, interesting calculations. Bye!